I searched high and low for a waterproof Zigbee or Z-Wave door sensor or switch sensor that could be used outdoors in the rain, in inclement weather. And if you're watching this video like me, you probably didn't find anything. The only one I found was this quite expensive, I think it was about a hundred dollars uh, sensor. And that's a lot more expensive than these $20 or less uh, smart things sensors. So the main thing is it had to be compatible with the smart things, which is what I use. And that could be almost any Z-Wave or Zigbee sensor. So I, there's a lot of choices for door sensor, the multi-purpose sensor, the contact sensors, but there are almost no waterproof sensors except for the one that I found, which was way overpriced. So my solution to that is to take this smart things sensor, multi-purpose sensor, and enclose it in a waterproof housing. Now, I didn't pay attention to the size of this and how small it was before purchasing it and comparing it to the size of the box that I'm, that I'm using. Now, this box is enormous compared to the sensor. So there's probably some smaller waterproof boxes that could be used. I just ordered the first waterproof box that I saw that would fit my, my specifications. So if you look at the sensor, what's actually gonna go into the waterproof box, it measures only 2.04 inches wide, 1.17 deep, and 0.575 inches thick. Let me go back in millimeters. So it measures 51.86 millimeters wide, 30 millimeters deep, and 14.58 millimeters thick. One thing to consider though is you actually need more space in the box than just the size of the SmartThings sensor itself because you need the cover to be able to slide off. Some of the other devices like this ring device, like it has a snap on this side and the cover comes straight off like that. But um, with the SmartThing sensor, the cover slides back. So although the SmartThing sensor is um, 1 point, you know, 1 9, 1, 1 1.2 deep or so, in order to slide the cover back to replace the battery, oops, you need at least 1.8 inches, 1.8 inches of space, 1. Point, let's see, even more like, I guess you could lift it like that at some point. Yeah, you need about 1.8 inches of space in there to be able to slide the cover off, lift it, replace the battery, and then slide the cover back on. So that's something to take into consideration when determining the size of the box. So I'm glad I got an actu actually a box that's plenty big. This box, uh, which I purchased off Amazon, came as a two pack. You can also buy the one pack, but I figured I'd have it used for this, the two pack and it was cheaper per part to get two of them. This, the seal is not in place yet when it arrives. So you have to carefully press the seal in like this and go all the way around. You can do it by hand. You can use a flathead screwdriver. It's actually pretty easy to do just by hand. And then once you get to the end, you're gonna snip it, you're gonna snip it, but you wanna snip a little bit extra so that it applies pressure together and both ends apply pressure and there's not gonna be any water that's gonna to get to that crack. In my situation, that crack is gonna be at the bottom anyway, so water would have to go uphill to get into it. So what I'm gonna do is mount the SmartThings sensor portion inside of the box along the wall like this. So then when the magnet comes close, it's gonna work. It's gonna sense it on the outside. What I'm using this for is I want to sense the open and closing of a 
heavy duty steel metal job box. And previously I tried to put the sensors inside of the job box, but the steel acts as a Faraday cage and blocks the signal such that they only transmit when the box is open, which means that I keep getting these messages that say that the transmitter can't be um, sensed or that it's offline. So I want to mount this to the outside so that, so that, I can, so that it stays in contact with it at all times and it'll work better in, for my situation. As you can see, there's a lot of space in this box, so a smaller box that would still fit the sensor would also work. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the adhesive on here and stick it inside of this box. Putting it, putting it up against the wall in the center area, like that. So now it's attached to this box using an adhesive. So what happens when the battery needs to be changed? Well, it's pretty simple. You're just gonna unscrew these screws, open it up, and then the sensor, the cover slides back. So there's plenty, that's one thing about this box, is there's plenty of room for the sensor, for the cover to slide back so the battery can be replaced. You can slide it back, or you can just pull it back like that, or you can get a screwdriver and, and pop it back and then that exposes the battery. You can see here, the battery is there to be able to, to be easily replaced. And then you just slide, put the cover back on and slide it back in place and snaps in place there. Once the sensor is adhered inside the box then, and you have the seal on the lid and you can just screw it together and then mount the box to the location where it needs to be mounted. Go ahead and close this up because I know that my sensor sensor is in the center line there, so I don't need to have it open anymore for reference. Make sure that your sensor is also already connected to the Smart Things Hub or whatever home automation hub you're using. Don't ever tighten these screws; it is going into threaded inserts in plastic. But, so there you go, and then you have these mounting holes on the outside that you can attach. In my case, I don't want to drill through the box I'm connecting to, so I'm just going to use some 3M uh, double-sided adhesive on the back. Once you close the box, if you can't remember which side you put it on, you can act actually, the magnet will be attracted to the side that the sensor is on. The side that the sensor is not on, the magnet will just fall off. So just do that test and then you know which side the sensor is on. To mount the sensor too. And so I'm going to mount this, the sensor side to the lid because this is a multi-purpose sensor so it can actually sense the angle. So I can tell, you know, what angle the lid is at too. Um, that'll just be helpful like in case, like let's say the magnet gets knocked off or something, then I can actually see from the, from the angle if it's open or closed. And I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it back here so it doesn't swing so far away from the opening and less likely to get to get in the way or get knocked off. So this should be, this back here should be plenty of space for it to work. Now the first thing to do is always clean off the area where you're going to apply it with alcohol. In this case, clean off up here. You gotta take out the big guns because this is really dirty. So some straight up, 99% alcohol that I use for making stuff. 3D printing and cleaning knives. Clean off this grime on here. I don't know if it's a combination of spray paint and dirt, but it's dirty. I think there's spray paint on here too. <laughs> but I see the galvanizing coming through. You have to make sure that whatever tape you use is can withstand the, the hot and cold temperatures of being outside. Figure out which side has a sensor on it. This side has a sensor. And then mount it here. It's already well stuck on as soon as I put it on there. 
easiest mounting would be to use the screw holes, but I don't want to drill extra holes into this box. Grab this magnet, take off the adhesive on that one, that side, and place it right here. I'm just going to put it up against the surface, it's not always pulling. Now when I open this box, it should separate to send a signal to the sensor. 